Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hank. This is episode 150. Episode 150. This is a round number. We like to celebrate those round numbers around here. Very, very special guests in the building. They tried to talk some retirement BS to me, and I ignored the shit out of them. Sent them this beautiful topic for just my girls. Y'all, welcome back to the podcast. Ladies, reintroduce yourself to the audience. Uh Uh-uh. What the fuck was that? Uh -uh, uh Uh-uh. Let's take two. Say that again now. Say that. Say that again. You don't, we don't whisper. Say it with your chest now. Come on now. What up, though? It's your girl, Here we Tashi. Go. It's your girl, Tashi. <laughs> and we are formally, currently, something. Potentially, one of the podcasts. The podcast. It depends it's on complicated. the day. Today, it's today, complicated. That's going to be the new thing. It's complicated <laughs> podcast. Right, formally known as what up, though, podcast. It's, 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 you don't have to ask where somebody says what up though you don't have to ask where they're from international hype not just the hashtag it's a way of life <laughs> now this is Nothing my brother right? yeah this is down this guy this here is my brother you gotta oh. introduce yourself to the audience too though he's not a first timer though either he's been here before yeah i'm going on my name is terrence um i will be either one um but like you said it's not my first time here you know i'm happy to be here and looking forward to having a nice conversation with you folks today <laughs> look, at him, look at him. I'm a Pisces. I'm 6'2. Uh, <laughs> you know I'm Actually, I'm a Scorpio, but I don't want to get in on it. Oh, Lord. Copy that. Scared of you, Sam? No, Scorpio. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, this is, this is what I. This is, again, this is another one. Shout out to my folks from the BTG podcast. This is the first time I'm doing an episode since we did the first podcast link live show. Shout out to everybody who purchased, who purchased the ticket, who showed up to the situation, made a post, liked the post. We appreciate all of that love. But special announcement here we are doing another live show, podcast link live show. This will be the second one now. This will be the hip hop edition. October the 19th Ooh. at Crush Lounge. Get your tickets now. Hit the link in my bio and get your tickets now. Eventbrite right there for you in case you're out of town in any of those situations. You just want to show some love out of the country. We appreciate all of that love. But Crush Lounge, 4.30 p.m. on Saturday, October the 19th. The show will be 4.30 to 8. Get there. Get a drink. My girl Keish. Shouts out to Keish with Cakes. Keish will be in the building. Keish sells out at all of the live shows. In case y'all don't know, you get there early and get with Keish because she will be sold out by the end of the show. But, uh, Shouts out to everybody, like I said, that came out to the first one. We'll be doing another one soon. We'll be doing a watch party soon. Just stay tuned to the page, and we'll have all those announcements for you. Now, back to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype, episode 150. Ladies, Stokesy, uh, is love still important? This is one that I went through the phone, and I said, I haven't heard anything from my girls from What Up Though in a while. We exchange a few text messages and such here and there just to check in, make sure everybody's breathing, make sure those threads are still being held on to by touch. Um, so this is what I need to know though from the single people is love still important and because Jess showed up first for work we're going to go to her first Jess so what kind of love are you referring to a love for a child a friend a co-worker perhaps no 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 we are talking excuse me thank you see a professional podcaster like yourself paid talent you know I'm saying, who's done live shows and all those type of situations <laughs> I appreciate you for holding me accountable in that situation in this well, you time you were very of- clear and you know a lot you want me to tell you my love for me we're talking spousal love we're talking the love of the opposite oh, the wow. love of whatever it is that you love or whomever it is that you love <laughs> just G could we get you to start off Episode 150, please, ma'am, and thank you. <laughs> well, again, not sure why you wanted me for this episode, but currently, do is love me loving a man important? No. Next person. I'm not sure is, what else you want. Is, that, is it important for you to love a man? Is love still important? Is love still something that we're chasing? We were always told that like marriage was the goal, that like, happily ever after you 2.5 kids. <laughs> Like picket fence. Now that wasn't a thing for the niggas. <laughs> that was what we were all sold as the dream. Is that still what 
uh, is important to you? Is that is that what life has shown you? Is that something that you're trying to attain? Jess, you oh, got to give me oh. a little more, more than no, I'm not looking for this man at the moment. Come on, Jess. <laughs> I'm not looking for nobody at the moment. You know, a lot, a lot has happened to me these past couple years with men, and I'm okay alone. You know, me and alone, we get along real good. <laughs> alone, don't hurt your feelings. Alone, don't yell. Alone, don't got no all oh, these demands. Alone is alone is great. Now, I feel like when I maybe one day, I don't know, let's say two years, when I could be ready to date again, maybe. But today, no. Love is not important. But you know who I do love? The Lord. Copy that. <laughs> uh, and I love my friends. I love my friends. are great. All right. Now, uh, brother, your face is twisted. Let's go to TT now. <laughs> what do you have to say about this one? <laughs> I'm, I'd be so, I hear, could I hear that, like, from so many women, like, um, as a single man, and it, it's honestly, it's honestly heart, it's honestly, like, not, I'm not going to say sad, I'm not trying to, trying to figure out the no, word, it, but it's, it is sad, it's but it, that, that's, that's the only word I can really come up with, because it's like, I, to hear that from women, it's just like, I, I don't, it, it's, it's mind blowing to me because it's like, what? At, at after thirty, what benefit do we have in being like being single? Like, what's the benefit in being alone at over after over thirty? So now we now we start talking about what's the like, benefit being of being with somebody? It's a, it's a, I, it's way more benefit than being alone. I could just start with just how about when I when I when I need somebody to talk to. And I want—I I want to call my girlfriend. I want to call my mom. I just need somebody just to, to vent to. I got somebody that I got somebody that got my back. I got somebody that's with me through thick and thin. I got somebody that's going. That, just those three things alone are are way more, are way better than. Hey, you know what? How about when I go to the hospital when I'm sick? Right? I'm sick in this hospital. I ain't got nobody. That emergency to contact. I, I got I got my mom with my I keep up I got my mom with my emergency contact for everything. This is my emergency contact. That's what I'm about saying. To say, so all those so, things you explained, I call Tashi. So it, so that's my, my point, boyfriend. right? So don't worry, so that's I'll, the I'll, point, I'll, right? I'll so <laughs> right, so but that's the point, right? So it's like so and so in theory, you don't want to be alone then because if you wanted to be alone, she wouldn't even be there. Well, I didn't. Right. Let's the clarify. I'm not lonely, but do I need to be with a partner? No, I do not yearn to be with a man or a woman, and I'm so, not sad right, and I, and that I'm fine, single right? at night. And and that's completely fine, right? And I always ask women this same question: If a man came to you, like you you met somebody, and he came off initially, yeah, I don't need women. Yeah, I don't really need y'all, right? I, I don't, don't really don't think I said that. Well, I don't. I don't want a woman for real, for real. Like you, you did say, I don't need you. Said I don't. You said I don't need to love a man. You definitely did say that. But okay. um, so that's what but I'm I saying. Would, so, but if somebody approached me and we're having a conversation, why would I say that if we're just talking? I'm just saying this person might be interested in you. You might be interested in this person, and then y'all start. I talking. might be, but but currently there aren't there isn't anybody that I'm interested in. So today, okay, that's just, why my I, answer is no. But so. We speak things into we speak things to me. We speak things into what we want. So if I'm if I'm walking around thinking this, like I don't need something, that's exactly how I'm going to carry it. If I feel like I don't need this job, I'm I'm, I'm gonna carry it just like that. I'm gonna go to work like I don't need this shit. I'm and I'm not gonna give my I'm not gonna give my full effort and full performance into anything that I feel like I don't need. So if I feel like I don't need you, if I meet you, I don't care what what you got going on. If I feel like I don't need you, I'm already going off in my head. It don't matter. No, I don't, do. I don't need do. nobody I just met because they're a stranger. All right. So now this is uh let's let's get out. We bogged into what Jess answer was. What is your answer though, Stokesy? Do you absolutely. feel like yes, absolutely. do you feel like love is still important? Absolutely. It absolutely is still is. Like if if I didn't think that, then I would just like I said again, there would be no need for me to be out here trying to seek a wife or trying to seek a woman. Like what, what would be the purpose of me doing that? If, if, if that's not important, like yeah, it's 
is it the most important thing? No, but is it is it of the utmost importance? Yes. Because you can love somebody, but I feel like you got to work this thing. You, you have to work for it. You have to put effort into it. And a lot of people, but so, but if I feel like I don't need it, I'm not working at it. What am I going to work towards that for if I feel like I don't need it? There's no need for me to put any effort into that because I don't need that. Something that so you it's said, definitely uh, important. It's very important. But most people don't want to work at it or put the effort into it. Something that you said, episode 78 was me and you. What are the benefits of being uh, single after 35? Available on all streaming platforms right now. You can go back in the archives and check that out. Um, Tatch, you've been quiet over here now. Let's go. Ain't nobody out that window. What you looking over there for? <laughs> this is a complicated. It's a complicated question. I I feel like love is always love is always important, but I don't know if I still if I see myself having like romantic love. Like I just I feel like platonic love, even like with a partner. Like I feel like if I could maintain like a platonic love, like a uh just a a level of like caring about somebody enough, then I'd be cool with settling down with somebody who I can even have like that with. I feel like liking somebody, you have to love somebody to be able to like be their spouse. Like there's just no, I don't know. Like I can't do for somebody who I don't have love for, but I feel like the level, like that deep, romantic like fairy tale love I used to really really want I don't know that I care to have that like if I fell into it sure so yeah the answer to your question is yes it's important but the level of it to me is just different like I feel like you can you can be platonic enough with a spouse where you can do life with them and it's fine but it doesn't have to be this like big romantic like oh, I just love this person more than anybody. I might not love a nigga more than I love anybody else in the world. That'd be great. But to me, it's also like, how long have you been in my life compared to other people? Like, how much am I going to love you? Like, I don't see a man coming into my life today and me just loving him more than anybody else around me. And that, like, blindly going in and, like, really, them they're loving a stranger is something that scares the shit out of me. All right, so a couple of the key things that you said there. The fairy tale of the happily ever after situation. Fairy tale was the key word that you used. The fairy tale is because it's a fairy tale. That's not how anybody's situation is. But that's <laughs> how women, I feel like that's how women start and it kind of like declines. Like as we get older, it's like you start off in la la delusional land. Like I feel Let like women real quick, start off. hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. I'm this is I got you. I'm point guard this situation. No, hold on. Oh, no, 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 like women start with our tank, like our our delusions are in full throttle. Like we are ready to like, oh, I just love, love, love. And we get hurt, hurt. And over time, like the older you get, other things become more important than having this like perfect love. Romantic love, especially yeah. when you got kids. Listen. Touch hit it on that. touch, you hit it on the head here. And you didn't even recognize this. This is the quiet part out loud. Women start off with the fairy tale and they're here. Mm -hmm. And as life is giving you all that life will, you realize this is not attainable. This mm -hmm. is never going to happen. That dude don't exist. That nigga was somebody that somebody made up, drew a picture of. Mm -hmm. So as you start to come down, niggas start here. Where mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't really know. I can play the field. I can have Tachi and Jess. Mm -hmm. and Aja, shouts out to Aja too. Aja had the baby, and then she think we they forgot can, about. They her. can get real unless they all die. <laughs> so now you get, you get to the situation where when you find that person, and then you like, oh shit, I didn't know that the dudes are here because we they, we didn't know this was real. This existed, or we could feel this, or we could get here, and we start to get here once we find that person, and then it's like, oh shit, I didn't know it was like this. So now you kind of got a problem where it's like, is this shit even real? Because the woman has been shown that this shit ain't real. 
the man is now looking at some shit that he never even really kind of knew existed or he could feel that he could think and he don't even know what the fuck is going on how to even compartmentalize that how do i even tell my man about this shit how i talk to him about it when he ain't never seen this type of relationship or he's mm-hmm. never felt this shit and i don't even really know what the hell this is that i'm feeling this is the type of thing that uh is the conflicting battle that happens when we get to like late 20s 30s ages that we talk about like especially once you hit them 30s this is why i say love isn't very important uh me and my wife married eight years now hey baby um we've been talking for 18 though and it's like the person that she met when i was 18 19 is damn sure not the person that i am now but you could have never told me and i never could have imagined that like now i had a conversation with somebody and it was like uh i'm so used to being alone like i don't even want nobody i don't need nobody like yeah i would like to have somebody but like trying to teach somebody what it is that i want what it is that i like it's like that's what you have to do to be in a relationship i think we might even did this topic before i need to look it up and i can see if we did it but i know i did it where it was like uh you got to lose a little bit of yourself to be in a relationship you have to be willing to sacrifice some of those things if me and jess was in a relationship for six years and now i meet touch it's like i can't do the things that i did with just to be with touch because you're a totally different person i have to now reevaluate my game and be willing to adjust my game to be with you i gotta be willing to put some of the things that i think and how i feel aside so that we can grow together once we get in a relationship where we loving each other married or whatever that situation is it's like we gotta grow together and it's not just about me doing what i want to do or how i feel that's the shit that like i said this is the roller coaster situation that we get up here on and mm-hmm. I told this person that I was having this conversation with when they was telling me about how they could do all this shit about alone. I said, I can't be without my wife. I've been with her for too fucking long. Like, I wouldn't know how to operate without her. Life is going to throw so much shit at you. Like, TT is saying, like, you need somebody to talk to about this shit. You need somebody to talk to when, like, your brother gets killed. Your cousin gets sick. You lose a parent. And it's like, I might want to talk to TT about it, but he might have his own situation. He might have his son today. He can't talk to me about this right now. I'm in the hospital, like you just said, and now, well, your daughter's in the hospital, or your son has something going on, or whatever your situation might be, you're not obligated to be here. No matter whatever happens, my wife is obligated to be here. If she has something happen with her, I'm obligated to be there. I have to be by her side with this situation. She can't face this by herself. I can't face this by myself. And when you by yourself, though, you're forced to face these things by yourself. And when you have these bad situations, you'll be needing somebody to talk to. And sometimes your cousin, your man, your homie, they're busy with their own shit. They might be working a double today. Like, might have cheerleading practice, a football game, or whatever the fuck is going on. And they can't get to you because they're not necessarily obligated. They love you to death and all of that, but they ain't obligated. Something else that you were saying, Otach, too, where this person comes in and is essentially a stranger. Everybody's a stranger until we meet. We were strangers until I slid in y'all DMs. <laughs> I think that was probably mm-hmm. Jess that was running the page. I slid in the DMs and she slid back and we just exchanged links and started talking off those two links. But it's obvious like she can't have the same type of feelings for you, for me that she has for you because yeah, we got to cultivate that relationship. We got to grow and build mm-hmm. that. Like, it takes times. It takes scars. It takes us to have to go through some things. It takes for you for me to have to look up and be like, yeah, you was there when such and such happened. You texted me or you called me or you just showed up at the house. We might have just sat in silence, but I remember that you was there. And I also mm-hmm. remember the motherfucker who didn't call, who didn't text, and who wasn't there. But uh my bad. No. Go ahead, bro. You was trying to say something. No, that's cool. I just I just I have a great point. I just wanted to speak on like I'm pretty good at this. You <laughs> said about the, the fairy tale thing, right? The the biggest thing, and I actually just had this conversation with somebody two days ago. One of the biggest disconnects is as men, we don't really have that fairy tale, right? We don't have this fairy tale type of situation how we want this thing kind of to go like premeditated right a lot of women have that and the thing about it is they don't it takes them too long to realize that that fairy tale is not existent and now once they realize that that fairy tale man is not existent and now i gotta look at people in a different lens i'm 30 something now and i didn't it didn't took me too long to realize that this person does not exist that I have in my brain that I think are going to do all of this stuff. Now, and, and, and then somebody else, I think somebody else said or, or something earlier, like, well, well, if it comes to me, I ask this question religiously. Can we all agree on this line that love, like unconditional love is a very rare, is rare, right? We can, we can all agree to that. 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All, all, I think all love is conditional. Yeah. No, I mean, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying somebody like to just love you unconditionally, flaws and all, everything. We, that we could, that's 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 kind of, that's a rare thing. You can say that, right? Mm-hmm. So I always ask, hold on, what rare thing that everybody wants, but only a select amount of people get? I don't care what you want. It could be a bag. It could be a house. It could be a car that everybody wants, but only a select amount of people get that's going to just fall in your lap without you having to do anything to go to obtain that. People who have this thing in their mind, like, oh, this person just want to just come to me. What great person, what great thing just comes to you? If you have a college degree, they ain't going to just come to you. If you want this house that nobody wants, you want to have to put some work in to find that. It ain't going to just be like, oh, yeah, I woke up one morning in this house that everybody wants. But it's going to come to me without me doing no work to it. But I don't, I'm not going to do much work because, I, again, I have this fairy tale person that has to make this and has to do this and has to do this and has to do this. I told my bros, I used, and I used to have like a list. Well, Lawy, my list of things that I look for in a female has four things on it now. Four. All that other stuff is frivolous. So what? Well, frivolous. What I have you, four yeah. things that I look for. What's, and it's like what's on that, people who have on this that list, list now. Of, people will have this mm-hmm. list of 25 things. Like I was dealing with somebody, right? Well, Lawy, I'm gonna give y'all this a, a personal story real quick. And I'm gonna be and I'm gonna, and I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna go off. I was dealing with somebody, and I didn't even know she had a list, right? But after dealing with her, come to find out she had a list. Now, on her list, she had 24 things on her list. I checked off 22 of the 24 things. She focused on the two that I didn't that I didn't check instead of the, instead of the 22 that I did check. And I didn't even know that I was checking them until we started having a conversation. She pulled the list out, and she was like, oh, yeah, I do this. Oh, yeah, I do that. Oh, yeah, that's me. Check me off of this. Check me off of this. But the two things that I did not check was the focus of what everything. And it's like, are you, you, are you really joking right now? Like, you got to be. Twenty-two out of twenty-four. You're only focused on the twenty-four commandments. I don't know. But this is behind. But you know, like when people got lists, a lot of times they'll disclose their list, and people will try to like conform to a person's list. Sometimes. No, I didn't know this. And it's like you got somebody that's checking twenty-two out of twenty-four boxes. Oh man, tell Shorty we need the twenty-four list of commandments. All right, I'm trying to say sixty-eight. But it was like, oh yeah, no, them two, like yeah, Charlie, yeah. Oh, and it's like, man. yo, and it's, it's, it's wild. That happens so much. These expectations we had that we look for within a person. And it's like, do you really need all of that? Do you really uh, need all of those things from a person? Now, uh, Jess, the, the, uh, go I ahead, Jess. Like the topic really should not be, is love important? Because like I said, I have platonic love. I have family love. I have a child. But it really need to be, is love enough? And that answer is no. Just love is not enough, especially with a spouse. There's so many other attributes and things that a person has to have and has to be able to give in a relationship. And it can't just be I love you because I love you don't do nothing besides it's just it's that feeling of love. But if we're in a committed relationship, it's so much more to a relationship than just love. I would say yes and yeah, no. So you can so you continually say you're not missing anything right now. Like you, you're completely content. Like you got the love from 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 friends, the love from family, the love from you know coworkers, whoever. Mm-hmm. And if everything would you would be you're genuinely so you're content. As of so, now, and I said right now, it could change. People change. Things change. Jobs change. Everything could change. But right now, I'm content. I'm not lonely. I do not desire to have, I'm not even going to say to be with a man. I don't desire to have a spouse or a partner right now. That's not was, anything that I'm looking to have. If I it comes and I meet someone situation. and something happens, great. I'm not closed off to it, but I don't desire to have it right now. I would say it's a it's like a double-edged sword with that situation because love ain't enough to pay your gas bill or nothing, but you need, like I said, you need that. You need love. You need to have that. 
person. It's a lot of toxic food. relationships, but I love him. Okay, and he whoops your ass. Like, look, I mean, it's a, so, it, if you're really trying to go there, it's a lot of love partnerships and relationships where they love each other and they should not be together. And so this is the situation where some people don't know what love looks like. Some people don't know what love is. Some people don't know what a healthy but relationship is. But it's love is. to them. So but they that's think it's that love. is love. Jay, the, it's, but it's not enough because the respect isn't there. The loyalness isn't there. That, the companionship why, isn't there. But that's why that I said. That all builds on love. But that's why I said some people don't know what it looks like. Some people don't know what it feels like. Some people don't know what it sounds like. Some people think it's screaming, hollering, cussing each other out. I always give people this example. My mom and my dad was together for 40 some years before my dad passed. I never saw them have one argument. Not one argument that they have in those 40 years. This is somebody that I, TT is somebody I grew up with. He can attest to coming into my house and my mom and my dad never made him feel like an outsider, never made him feel anything less than like they're treating him like their own child. Because the whole, the, our whole hood calls my mom and dad the mother. I, I'm about to say, I call her the mother. Like that's what her name is so, in my phone, like the mother, for sure. I always will say like seeing the example of my mom and my dad, yeah, that gave me a certain perspective, but it also, also shows you that I can't say that their relationship goals because I don't know what it took for them to sit in that front row. My aunt and my uncle have been together since they was like 13. They're in their 70s. I talk to my aunt all the time about uh, give me the woman's perspective on this. Tell me what you hear when this happens. Without giving her like this is what me and my wife was talking about or whatever. I had the same conversation with my uncle because it's just to get a different perspective from them. But ultimately, I don't know what it took them to be together for 60 years because you can't make nobody else's situation be yours because that ain't you. If your mom, if your dad was beating your mom up every damn day and this is what you think love looks like, or they argue constantly and this is what you think love looks like, he was demeaning your mom. So you think that the dude demeaning you is what love, like all of these situations, yeah, we got toxic joints all out into the world. But that's also because some people don't know what it looked like, what it feel like, what it sound like, what it smells like. Like they don't know when you walk in the house, like you ain't supposed to just have shit all over everywhere. Some people grew up with shit all over everywhere. So that's what they think is normal. That's what gets normalized to you. That's what gets you thinking like, this is what it is. This is what it is. And that ain't what it is. It sometimes takes somebody to come in and change your whole perspective. And you'd be like, shit, I never even thought about it like that. I never even knew that that could happen. I never looked at it. I never, you just didn't know. Your relationship is also like so unique to the two people who are in it. And Absolutely. it depends. Like, I feel like everybody's life, like, like he was asking, like, does she feel like anything is missing? Jess has a very solid foundation and good family and that I feel like helps with not feeling lonely not feeling like you got to go through shit by yourself I don't necessarily feel like I have to go through shit by myself all the time but I don't have that same foundation a lot of my support is my friends and I can't always depend on my friends for every little thing that I need or every little thing that I want so I feel like I feel more of a void when it comes to wanting a partner just because like I do need, like, the shit that we're talking about, I need help. I need support. I have a kid. I want to have a family. Like, I want things to look a certain way. But love is absolutely not enough for that to happen. That would be an amazing thing to be a piece of it. But that that can't be, I would hope that that's, like, the core. Like, I hope that I love the person that I end up with. I would hope I wouldn't have to marry somebody who I didn't feel some kind of love and connection with. But I feel like I understand why people marry without love or end up with people without love for support, for security, for just like, just to have another body there with you. Yeah. Because it don't even have to be good companionship. It don't have to be good emotional support. It can just be another body. But exactly. even like he was saying about having like, like, what were you saying about uh, feeling like it's going to fall in your lap? Like, I feel like women don't necessarily want the fairy tale to fall in their lap, but a lot of we, I don't know about y'all out in Philly, but niggas don't really get down with, like, dating out here. They not really trying to court. It they not trying to, and no, I'm, I don't no feel like you Philly. have. It ain't no different. Nobody's the same. It ain't, I don't it ain't feel like niggas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like nobody more. is really, like, going in and trying to, trying to come in and pursue, at least me. Maybe it's just us. But nobody is really coming in and trying to, you know, fully pursue. And that it's like I can make a fairy tale out of out of a friendship. I can make it, 
that but I don't even have I can't even lay the damn foundation if somebody like come on you gotta bring it bring me something I can't start the shit I can't come talk to you I can't ask you on it I can't do all of that I just can't I'm already over here being I'm I'm the man of this motherfucking house over here shit I'm the man at Jess house too hey. I'm fucking built over over Jess house building shit because niggas can't do it. <laughs> Hey, yeah, exactly. I, I, listen, I, right? And I won't do it. <laughs> I'm and not listen, even right? Try. And listen, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's like so. Even with like somebody like myself, right? Like, and I was just, I'm telling you, I just had this conversation the other day about like I just told him I ain't been on a date in almost two and a half years, right? And I'm on the tip, like I said again. Why, if I meet you, and in the first three or four lines you say to me, "Y'all don't really need a man." That's gonna excite me. Why are y'all even talking about that? But what you mean? Like it's it's a part of it's like well, what is leading to that conversation where somebody's saying they don't need it? Because I wouldn't trying to fast track the woman. I wouldn't come to the man. Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen, let me listen to me. Let me me finish. Let me get my point real fast. Listen, listen. I I ask that question. That's one of the first questions that I ask a woman. Cause that okay, right. Now, what do you do? You need listen, a man? Is your first question. Listen to me. It's again. It's always. It's a. Me- it's, it, I'm not just asking this for no reason. Cause like I said again, we treat our wants and our needs differently. Agreed. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Mm. So if, again, if I feel like I don't need you from the rip, if I start from the beginning with the mindset of I don't need you. What am I going to gain from trying to trying to court you? Because at any moment, right? Because at any moment, you're going to say, if I do something that you don't particularly like, care for, whatever, whatever, it's going to be, I don't give up. I'm out. I don't, I don't have to work for this. I don't need you. So I'm going, right? Do you so, feel like you can love a woman who is like I don't think that's a good, like good, like good start. Do you feel like you can love a woman who is super yeah, uh, prideful? Like, do you feel like, because I feel like a lot of women are very prideful and so many women are living, not just in their masculine, living day to day in their masculine energy. So, of course, we're going to say, oh, yeah, I don't need, if somebody brought that question to me, if it, it's like, I don't need in you, like, I don't know you, minutes, but, 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 but you, I wouldn't. What are you looking I, for is one of the questions that I, first question that I asked. What are you looking but for? But people are always clear, question, and that's what that's I'm saying, like, sometimes. Question. But sometimes you have to, you got to show somebody like what it is that you're going to bring to them for them to even feel the need to like, feel like they need you. Like eventually they will feel that, but off the rip, most people are too prideful to say something like that, to say that they, they need you or they need a man. Like most women aren't going to say that, especially where y'all at. And listen, right. Agree. And that's why like when people ask me this question, I say it religiously. Like, yes, I need a woman. Like, can I survive? I've been surviving but without you one. Can, but your right? pride is in a place where you can say that. Like, you have like, to understand that you you in a different space. You're not always going to find a woman off riff who's going to be that open and be like, listen, yeah, no, nah, I, I definitely I, need no, a man. I need, I need. No, him. trust me, I know, Ty. I know. No, <laughs> I know. I've been, I've been single for three and a half years. I know. that. I, I, I might have met two. I might have met two in three and a half years that, that, that willingly said, I need a man. Like openly said, you know what? Y'all need a man. Two and three. You also can years. broaden the question up, too me, and say, "Do me. you feel like men and women need each other?" I say that. Let That's how I word. It. I don't. I don't word it like how I'm wording it right here. Like I don't just like miss. We just having a conversation, but I definitely smooth yeah. it over. Like you know, in a word it in a time where I'm not like where you feel like I'm attacking you. Like no, I, I'm not attacking nobody. I just want to just gain some information on where your mindset is. Let me jump in here because we got to move on to the next segment. Yeah, because uh. The thing that touch that you hitting there is it takes a lot of uh self evaluation for you to realize that I need or I want this other individual and people pr- pride and ego is what f's up a lot of relationships. Mm-hmm. People having too much pride to say like uh not even like start off a conversation with like yo do you need I don't know if I need you or not because I don't know anything about you like, I'm kind I don't of know you you're a stranger yeah, I don't know you. Yeah, we kind of got to get past the introductory phase of, oh, all right, you're such and such, you work here, what ah. do you like to do type of thing? Then that'll tell me if I want to go further. That's a converse, That's a little bit down the line conversation. But once you get into like your 30s, 40s age, it's like you kind of get in, it's like the clock is ticking type of thing. So we kind of try to fast track these situations, which is how we have uh-huh. these problems. Um, but yeah, you kind of got to, you know, slow walk that one because most people ain't going to be like, look, I need a nigga and this is what I need him for. <laughs> like, 
Because if they do but, that, then that's when they come in with 24. And if I do that, then the nigga gonna run and this is running. This is what it is. Because if I have my rent, my car, no, I need my, my baby need a daddy. That's when the twenty four command. That's when the twenty fourth commandments come but, out on you. But hold on, but, but, no, but hold but up. Pat, we, let me say wait. this one last thing, Hank, real quick. This go ahead. Not, we can move on. One thing, a real one, you're not going to have to say those things to because he already understands. You're not going to have to say that to a real man but because he already understands. Point. That's my point, and what you're saying too is that a real woman and a real man, we already know we need each other. So asking it is pointless. Copy. At the I end agree. of the day, you already know. You already know that women and men need Especially each other. Especially if you're happen. doing this within the first few moments of meeting each other. So you're doing it. You're testing them. And if you, if you level, test people, episode, it's a chance you're going to fail. On the podcast I'm, for the I'm, I'm, it's, I'm just trying to gain what you're looking is. like. Oh, but you can't do it that so I'm written on somebody because you also got to know <laughs> like, what's your communication name? styles because sometimes women... You got to get to know them. So, like, I don't just come off the rip saying anything to a man, but it start get a feel for who you are. I know how gentle I got to say shit to you because I can talk to you like I'm your bro, but I can also I can I can reel it in and be real soft please with it and make please you don't talk to me like my bro. Okay, touch the uh, listen if I have to, but if, if I gotta listen, <laughs> sometimes I got a big bro nigga because I know I'm not about to fuck with you. Let me tell you something. Don't come on this day to my yo, bro. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying, no. I right. can be all of that. You you don't know exactly. Next that's next what segment. makes us us. Next segment. This one is sponsored by Custom Hustle. That's at Custom Hustle World on Instagram. It's Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom jerseys, jackets, uh, t-shirts, sweatsuits, uh, football, basketball, baseball, hockey. We got the pocketbooks. We got the sneakers. Four versions of the sneaks are available in any color. So you get with us over there at Custom Hustle World, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Also, the barber, barber capes. My bad. Sunglasses, all that love. Um, we're going to do this one. Uh, this is the get to know segment, but we're going to kind of keep this along the lines of, like I said, we're doing a podcast link live show. The second one will be October the 19th. Get your tickets now. So this will be a couple of music drinks to throw at you. Jess, who's the best R&B group of all time? I know y'all do a lot. Of, y'all did a lot of harmonizing back when y'all was podcasters on the show. Who's best the best R&B, R&B group of all time? Mm-hmm. Come on now, you're staring off in the space, girl. I'm I trying to think. It's 112 or something in that playlist. 112 <laughs> is not the best of all time. I don't if think I they are either. To, I was just throwing something out there. If I had to... Is Jackson 5 R&B? I feel like they're not. They're not. What are they? Uh, pop. Pop. Pop didn't exist in the 70s. Until but okay. them niggas came out there popish. <laughs> but any R&B group mimics the Jackson 5 as far as, all right, then I'll go Temptations. Just as to how, that what their performance style was, lead over to the side or in the middle, harmonizing. Well, I'm, I'm going to go to Temptations. They R&B. What are they? Not R&B? Hey, no, what you was riding around my everything dad, mimics, right, no, Everything listen. is going to oh, mimic Jackson listen. 5 or Temptations. Every single right. group after that. This is what you have to understand. Is, uh, my dad was 40 when I was born. So when we was in the car, we weren't listening to Biggie. We was listening to The Temptations. I have ever, That's what I'm saying. They the, they, the, they, the, they, the they the blueprint. They the blueprint. So you they ain't throwing Temptations at somebody who doesn't have a whole bunch of Olivia the Slave and get you in the room and such in his phone. <laughs> no. Touch. Best just R&B solo of all time. Of all time? Mm-hmm. Forever, ever. She's staring off into space. Again, y'all did these harmonizing situations. I know y'all been a little while since y'all started. I mean, you're paid yeah, talent, bro. Yeah, mm, paid talent. I feel like, like I can only. I feel like I can only go based off of my current, uh, my current phase. Like, because my my favorite this year, and it's just because I just saw him as Donnell Jones. Of all, right now, of all time, of all you picked, not of all time. Touch, but you, you just That's said Donald Trump's not, not this ever. year. Of all time, <laughs> think of all time. I don't know. My thoughts oh my change God. like the, y'all know I'm an air sign. I'm flighty. My cha- my thoughts change. Like Copy that, Stokesy R and B best female R and B singer uh, Whitney. Okay, there you go. Look at my man. My Easy. man had one right there, locked and loaded. 
Okay, Donnell Jones was my man, but you had to say Usher or somebody got them. Come on, no. uh, sure, Usher. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jackson not R&B. Not R&B. Yeah. Bro, do you know how many R&B songs Michael Jackson has? Pop-ish. Bro, it's what is It's not popish. He could have Human nature is not a pop pop-ish. song. Lady of my life is not a pop song. <laughs> well, pop. He I, pop is literally just popular. Like it's popular just that, music. It's not that his a shit genre. Was. It's just popular yeah. music. Oh, he Michael does have Jackson R&B has music. a plethora of R and B songs dating back to Jackson Five. Last segment of the show. This is what do we need to know? Sponsored by H Two H Cleaning. That is at H Two H Cleaning on Instagram only. Roof and plumbing, flooring, HVAC cleanups, cleanouts. You need your tree trimmed, cut down, gardens taken care of. We handle all of that situation. Just need some of that. Listen, if you make it worth my while, we will slide out to the D and get you just right. Now, this is where you tell us. I'm gonna let that future man take care of that. Tasha, Tasha, get over there with the weed whacker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let my man Tasha take care of that. There you go. <laughs> Tash, take care Tash, of that. Tash. I'm just letting you have. I'm a jack of all trades. I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> Call it a full time hustler. I got everything but work. Okay, <laughs> I got everything Stokes. you need right here. A one stop shop. What do we need? What do we need to know? About just anything. Anything you'd like to push through? Any pain, or would you like to? Anything you'd like to throw out there? Yeah, um, don't vote for Kamala. That's, ep- that's episode 151, which is, that is one hell of a segue. Yeah, episode, episode 151 is all, episode 152, <laughs> excuse me, all about that. Uh, so that's what we needed to know. Okay, copy. Yeah, yeah. Ladies, anything y'all need to <laughs> want to say? Anything oh. that we need to know? Are we uh, getting back in the lab? Are we getting itchy? I'm saying, what's going on <laughs> I got a little itch, but this kind of did it for me. <laughs> Man. <laughs> right, no, I if you, if you see as you, you see as if you don't, you don't. Follow us on Instagram. Just Copy that. Blow up y'all, the comments if y'all want an episode. Yo, I appreciate yeah, y'all. Tell me how much on. you need me. <laughs> I appreciate y'all for coming on. That's episode 151. Once again, get the tickets. Hit the link in my bio. October the 19th podcast link live show. This is the hip hop edition for this show. We're going to be at Crush Lounge. Make sure y'all come out. Y'all, I appreciate y'all all coming on. We are out. I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.